Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. In the previous lecture, we have got to know about how uh, did we determine that is what is primary, what is secondary, and what is uh, tertiary alkyl halide. Along with that, of we have also discussed about uh, that uh, what are the different types of alkyl halides. And now we are going to talk about especially about we are talking about uh, the monohalogen derivative that is alkyl halide, and we are going to uh, that is uh, talk about what is the nature of that is the bond between that is carbon and uh, that is halogen atom and uh, what is uh, that means and what does different kind of uh, behavior it shows let us talk about that today we are going to talk about that is the nature of uh, that is cx bond in the alkyl halide and uh, that depends on the size of uh, the halogen atom that is been associated with that of the carbon atom so what is the behavior of that let us talk about it with the help of an example So suppose this is one of the alkyl halide and uh, this is what I have mentioned over here and we know that is alkyl halides uh, are uh, basically the one which consists of uh, the alkyl group along with that of a halogen atom and we know that the halogen atoms are the, one of the most electronegative elements in the whole periodic table. So we are talking about the halogen series that is starting from the fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. So these are the four things that we are going to talk about here. So fluorine is being the most uh, electronegative uh, that is element uh, in the periodic table as well as in the whole uh, that is halogen series. So in that case we could get to know that is uh, the fluorine is the one which will occupy the negative charge or, or halogen is the one which will uh, acquire a negative charge, partial negative charge on it. So meanwhile here the carbon will occupy that is partial positive charge. So this is the thing that we have got to know and this is because of the electronegativity uh, not only of the fluorine atom but the electronegativity difference that has been created because of the carbon and the halogen atom that have been bonded with each other. So therefore this kind of molecules or this kind of compounds are basically polar in nature. So the first thing that we have got to know that is yes these are polar in nature and that's the reason that uh, they are acting like a polar solvent also. They will behave like a polar solvent also. And now let us move on to the uh, behavior of it means uh, how does the overlapping take space and what is the nature of this uh, that is cx bond let us talk about this one so the main thing that we are going to talk about is this carbon and this halogen so talking about this carbon this carbon is the one which we know that uh, uh, it has uh, that is p orbitals so therefore uh, we could also measure it in this way and this is why i talk about the carbon atom so the one which is basically exhibiting sp3 hybridization so the carbon which is basically s is exhibiting sp3 hybridization so that uh, sp3 hybrid orbital one of the sp3 hybrid, hybrid orbital that will overlap with that of the p orbital of the halogen so now if we could observe that is talking about the carbon itself so carbon which has an atomic number of six so that could be written as uh, along with the electron configuration that is 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 so this is what we have but uh, talking about the uh, that is the overlapping so this 2p orbital of the carbon carbon that takes place uh, that uh, basically that takes place in the hybridization and now this 2p orbital of the carbon that will be overlapping with that of the p orbital of the halogen so for example in this case suppose if i am considering the uh, halogen as the fluorine so fluorine is the one which is basically having an atomic number of 9 so therefore i could write the electronic configuration of this as 1s2 2s2 2p5 so if I go in more detail, then in that case, I'll get to know that is uh, the p orbital, that is p subshell consists of three orbitals, that is one of is px, one of is py, and one of the orbital is pz. And if I fulfill the electrons, then in that case, I will get to know that is, here it is one, two, three, four, and five. So now in this case, as you could see that the pz orbital of uh, in this case it is fluorine but in, in any case of halogen atom that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine there where we could get that is a pz empty orbital that is an incomplete orbital so now this pz uh, orbital is basically responsible for forming a bond with that of the carbon's 2p orbital so now the main thing is what about the strength of the carbon and the halogen we know that the fluorine uh, in the whole uh, this halogen series it is having a smaller size so smaller the size mean, means we could say that uh, they are more electronegative and since they are more electronegative obviously we could say that there will be uh, a more attraction with that of the carbon atom and uh, that's the reason that the overlapping will also be increased and talking about the p orbitals in that way in that manner 
that is uh, talking about the fluorine p orbital that is pz orbital and that of comparatively that of fluorine bromine and iodine we'll get to know that as we move from up to down in the periodic table that is from fluorine fluorine bromine and iodine the p orbital shape or the size of the p orbital they also increase and that's the reason that uh, the 2p orbital or this 2p uh, orbital of the carbon atom will not uh, penetrate through that uh, uh, larger uh, that is p orbital so that's the reason that uh, the overlapping of the 2p orbital of the carbon with that of the pz orbital of the halogen of, that is of uh, fluorine it will be more compared to that of uh, the, uh, the bond between c and cl the bond between carbon and uh, bromine and the bond between carbon and uh, that is iodine so now here we could say that is the bond strength of uh, that is the carbon and fluorine is comparatively more than uh, the bond strength of that is carbon and chlorine compared to that of carbon and bromine and compared to that of carbon and iodine. So this is what I wanted to talk about. So this is just the nature of uh, the bond that how that which bond is basically more stronger compared to that of the other one. So that is the thing that I have talked about and now let us uh, talk about that uh, how they are very much strength uh, how much the strength it is between the carbon and the fluorine atom between them. So for that we have a small information for that we could explain it. So this is what I want to talk about and uh, let us uh, compare it uh, with the uh, different kind of physical properties from that we could uh, uh, estimate that what is the nature of that is carbon and halogen bond and uh, let us talk about that. So this is the diagram that I have mentioned over here and uh, so let us talk about that this is the bond between uh, that is the carbon and uh, the halogen over here and this is basically the bond enthalpy I am talking about and that is in uh, that is kilojoules per mole. I talk about this one this is basically the bond length in Armstrong and this one is basically in the dipole moment so it has been observed that uh, when we compare it with the that of the the first one that is suppose if I am comparing it with that of uh, that is methyl fluoride over here so that is uh, I am comparing the bond length between uh, that is the property of the nature or the nature of the bond between the carbon and the fluorine over here so in that case we have got to know that is the bond enthalpy uh, between the carbon and the fluorine so that energy required to break the bond is basically it has been found to be that is 452 that is kilojoule per mole and talking about the bond length it has been found to be that is 1.42 angstrom and that is of the dipole moment it has been found to be that is 1.847 dy so this is basically this has unit of dy so this is the thing that I have mentioned over here and talking about the next one that is comparing with the bond the nature of bond for that is uh, methyl uh, that is chloride so in this case it has been found that uh, the bond enthalpy or the energy required to break the bond between the carbon and uh, the chlorine uh, atom in this case it has been found to be that is 351 and that of the bond length it has been found to be that is 177 and compared to that of it is uh, the dipole moment has been found to be that is 1.860 so if we compare this one then uh, we'll get to know that is uh, the bond enthalpy it decreases the reason behind that is as the chlorine atom uh, obviously it has more atomic size compared to that of the fluorine atom so that so that's the reason that the bond between uh, or the bond length between the carbon and the chlorine it also increases that is 1.77 and that's the reason the uh, as as we know that if the length increases then it is easier for us to break the bond and that's the reason that only 351 kilojoule per mole of uh, that is of that much of energy has been required to break the bond and that is what it has been uh, uh, it can be done over here and talking about that is the dipole moment so it has been found that the dipole moment is basically it has been found to be 1.860 now let us compare with the another one that is suppose if I am comparing with CH3 that is Br so it has been found that the energy required to break the bond is basically or the bond enthalpy it has been found to be that is 293 kilojoule and that is of the bond length uh, if you are talking about so therefore it is 1.91 means the bond length increases and uh, that is the dipole moment it has been found to be 1.830 so this is the thing that we have got over here and now compare it with the last one that is CH3I obviously the energy required to break the bond it will be comparatively very much less and that is basically 234 and compared to that of the bond length it has been found to be that is 2.12 and that is uh, the dipole moment it has been found to be 1.636 so this is the thing that we have observed over here and uh, from this data we can easily estimate that what would be the nature of uh, that is uh, the bond of the carbon and halogen atom over here.
So this is the thing that we have got and it, it clearly indicates that the strength of the uh, carbon uh, atom and the fluid atom will be more and uh, that's it. That is what I was talking about. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have got, got to know various information regarding this and uh, I hope you will share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and get a channel. Thank you so much.